So while editing on the computer certainly buys you a little bit more freedom, uh, there is still a lot of need and a lot of want for people to edit on their smartphones, on their iPads, whatever it may be. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys exactly how I edit my landscape photos on Lightroom Mobile. Hey everybody, I'm professional landscape photographer Austin James Jackson. Really excited to be showing you guys how to edit your photos on Lightroom Mobile. They've made a lot of improvements to Lightroom Mobile in the last couple of years here to where you can almost do anything that you can do on the regular desktop Lightroom Classic on Lightroom Mobile. So it's really nice to just have a phone or an iPad or whatever it is to be able to edit your images like wherever you are. So I wanna show you guys exactly how I edit my photos on to Lightroom Mobile. I'm gonna be showing you guys a waterfall photo, a landscape photo, but whether you guys are editing portraits or sports or whatever you're editing, I think most of the techniques applied will be the same. So really hope this is helpful for you guys. Let's go ahead and jump right in there to Lightroom Mobile on my iPhone. Okay, so when you open up Lightroom Mobile here, you've got a few options, but obviously the first thing you need to do is load your photo in. For a lot of you guys, your photo might be under device, which you can see is down here on this like lower left corner. If that is the case for you, you've got your photo on your phone, maybe you took it on your phone, maybe you uploaded it to your phone, whatever it is, you can find it in device, you can scroll around until you find your particular photo. Now, if you're like me and you use Lightroom on the computer, it's gonna be, your photos will be under Lightroom, and click on it here. I have my photos in what is called a collection set, which is essentially just a folder, but um, so you can see all my folders here. Um, if you had them somewhere else, I could click on all photos. It'll show me my photos in Lightroom. Wherever you've got your photo, you just need to find it and make sure to open it correctly. So the photo that we're gonna be editing in this video is actually in this Columbia River Gorge collection set. We're gonna be editing this DNG photo here. DNG is just a raw. You can see right now you're looking at the raw image, so it's pretty bland and boring. I'm gonna show you guys how I edit this, including some global and local adjustments. Just kind of show you the whole process, exactly how it works. So first things first, I like to click on the screen and you'll notice that you open up with these little options down in the bottom, the kind of menu bar. Now you can click auto if you want, I don't really recommend it. I mean, if you wanted to edit using auto, you probably wouldn't be here watching this video anyway. So I'm gonna show you how to manually edit these. Now we've got a lot of options down here. We've got, uh, once you're in this little edit box here, it allows you to select light, color, blur, effects, detail, optics, and profiles. And if you wanna do some other things, you can select a different module here. I'm not gonna use presets. For this photo, I will crop, which I'll show you in just a second. We'll use a little bit of masking and then I don't necessarily think there needs to be any healing, but the healing is super easy to use. You could probably just click on that and uh, figure that out on your own. So we're gonna talk about mostly the edit and the masking and I'll show you guys how to crop. First thing I wanna do, uh, this photo is a little underexposed. So I want to click and drag the exposure up a little bit. I'm gonna avoid using the contrast slider right now. I'm gonna bring the highlights down on a waterfall photo like this. I wanna bring some detail back into the water. I don't wanna lose too much though. I want it to stay bright, but I do wanna bring the detail back probably about right there. And then I'll adjust the shadows. The nice thing is, as you adjust the sliders, you can see how the everything on the screen down the bottom goes away, so it's a little bit easier to adjust. Go in as well and kind of punch those whites a little bit. That'll help to kind of add a little bit of punch back to your image. And then I like to slide the blacks up a little bit. One thing that you might notice here is in this corner, uh, you can click and, or not necessarily click, but like pinch and drag with your fingers in or out in order to zoom in or zoom out, but I've got my tripod in the corner of my photo here, so I'm actually going to show you how to use the crop tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and click crop. Right now on the bottom, you can see where it says locked right here. This means that it will stay in the ratio that it's already in, which you can see on the bottom left is two to three. I like editing my photos in two to three. I'm gonna keep it in that same orientation. However, however, if you are someone that doesn't care about that kind of thing, you can uncheck locked and then you can just totally free transform it however you want. But I'm going to hit locked. I'm just gonna drag this up. I just wanna get rid of that on the corner and I don't wanna crop it so much that I'm cropping the water over there. I want it to be probably right about there maybe, looks good to me. You can go ahead and hit check the box. One other thing I wanna talk about, since we are talking about landscapes, really any kind of photo where you can see the sky, you can also click and drag on this bottom section to tilt the photo, which is helpful if uh, maybe you 
didn't take the photo straight in the field. And then as you just saw, you can go up here and hit these undo or redo buttons in order to undo or redo something that you've just done. Go ahead and hit the check box when you're done. Now, this is starting to look pretty good, uh, but it's gonna look a lot better in a second here. I like using the curve to add contrast. One thing I like doing on the curve is just dragging down on the bottom quarter up on the top quarter, that just creates a little bit of an S curve. You can hardly see it here, but the curve is going down a little bit on the bottom, up on the top. That helps to add some contrast into the scene. I also like to grab these two sliders here, which essentially affects just the very top and just the very bottom. And then I like to grab just at the top and just at the bottom and just drag up. This is gonna help me from, I'm gonna drag up on the bottom to keep you from losing the darkest of the darks in the image. And then on the top, I'm gonna drag down to keep from losing the details in the brightest of the bright. And then I can go back up on that about 75% mark and 25% mark and create more of an S curve to add some more contrast. That's looking pretty good. It's maybe a hair too dark. Let's just bring that back up a little bit. But for right now, I'm pretty happy with where that is. I wouldn't mess with coming in here on the colors of the curve too much. I would mostly just stick to this thing on the bottom right, whatever you wanna call that little symbol there. I'm gonna go ahead and hit done now that I'm happy with that. Now, one thing that I like to do that sometimes I'll do at the beginning of my edit, sometimes I forget like this time, uh, is just go into the optics and check both of these boxes um, to remove the chromatic aberration and enable lens corrections. Those are just like things that you should do to probably every image. So check both those boxes. You don't have to check lens corrections, but there's no reason why you wouldn't want to check chromatic aberration. Probably won't be able to tell on your phone if there is any, but it'll definitely remove it for you if there is some. So it's always nice to have. Now, I'm gonna go into color next. Now within color, there's a lot of things I can do. Probably most importantly, I can adjust the white balance. So I'm gonna scroll through here and if you felt like the white balance needed a change, you could do that here. For this photo, I might slightly cool it down and I might add just a hint of magenta tint. I can go in and adjust the vibrance and the saturation. Generally, you wanna be careful with these sliders because they can get pretty out of hand pretty quickly, but I'm feeling like about right there looks good. Less than 20 points on vibrance, less than 10 points on saturation is generally gonna put you in the right ballpark. You can also go in by hitting the color mix. So let's say I wanted to affect the blues here. I could zoom in like that to get a little bit better selection of the blues. Hit the target, click on blue, and you can see on the bottom I'm on saturation. I can drag that up that increases the saturation of the blues. I could go in and do the same thing with the luminance of the blues, really just to help that pop. Maybe get this up here. Now I can uncheck the target by clicking on it. I can zoom back out again, and then I can go back in and do something else if I wanted. So you might notice now that I zoom out, like, oh, these blues, I've brightened them way too much. I can just click on the blue here and I can drop the luminance. Same thing with the kind of aqua tones here. And if you don't wanna use the target, which to be honest with you, I probably wouldn't use the target. I did wanna show you that it was an option, but you can just select on the colors here, which I think it works fantastic. I can adjust the greens here. I can adjust the yellows. One thing that I like to do on my images is kind of make those yellows and those greens a little more synergized. So I like to increase the hue of the yellows by maybe 25 points towards green, and then I like to reduce the hue of the green, maybe 15 or 20 points towards yellow. That'll just help to kind of synergize everything in the image. So when I tap and hold on the screen, you can see we've got before, and here we've got after. Really easy to just hold before and after and see what it looks like. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to kind of the next step here. You can go in and apply some effects. We're gonna do that at the end. Some detail if you wanna reduce color noise, regular noise, or do some sharpening, you can do that here as well. I'm not gonna do that on this image. I do wanna briefly show you how to use the masking tool. Now, there's lots of cool things you can do with masking, especially on Lightroom Classic, um, but they have added a lot of really great features here on Lightroom Mobile. One thing that I really use the masking for a lot is for doing like a masking using luminosity values. So if I hit the plus here, I can select a luminance range. I'm just gonna hit create. And then you're gonna move the ring over the luminance that you wanna adjust or use the sliders to select a luminance manually. 
So I'm gonna move the ring. The luminance I want to grab is the whiteness, the like the bright part of the waterfall. Just like that, you can see as I move my finger, uh, it looks like that. So anything that's red is gonna be selected. Anything that's not red is not gonna be selected. I don't wanna select the kind of rocks on the left here and all this in the sky there. I'm just gonna drag this until I get rid of that a little bit on the bottom. Don't worry too much about dragging and adjusting and refining the mask necessarily um, because that's a little bit more advanced, but just know that you can do this by using that kind of luminance um, little circle there. You can hit apply. Now this gives me the options to come in and apply any other adjustment to just that particular part of the photo. I can adjust the exposure. You can see how quickly that works in, or I can also hit undo here and I can drop the highlights. That's probably gonna be what I wanna do is just drop the highlights just like that. I think that's looking great. Now I'm gonna show you one more little trick with the masking here. I'm going to click the plus to create a new mask. This time I'm just gonna use the brush. The brush is just gonna use my fingerprint as I like brush over the image. You can make some adjustments here change the size of the brush right there to make it a lot larger or a lot smaller. I want it to be about that size. You can click here to adjust the feather. I like my feather at 100 when I'm using the brush. And then here, adjust the flow. Usually I will leave the flow up at 100 as well. Now, we are going to be able to use the brush just by simply painting on the image like that. What I wanna do on this particular waterfall photo is just add a little bit of glow or haze kind of around this central area. What I wanna do with the brush is just kinda of add a little bit of haze around the waterfall to give the waterfall kind of a look like it's a little bit maybe bigger than it actually is. I'm just gonna go like that. And then I'm maybe gonna do that on the bottom as well, just like that. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna to go to light and I'm going to ever so slightly pull up the exposure. I'm gonna to go to effects and I'm going to slightly drop the dehaze. Now, what I'm doing here isn't a ton, but it is a little bit. And essentially I'm just adding around the photo. Now, this concept can be applied to anything. You could brush anything in. You could brush exposure, you could brush uh, saturation, brightness, whatever you want, you could brush it in, you could do that. Additionally, you can use things like a radial or a linear gradient or select based on color range. The options are virtually endless here. Or if you have a photo of a person, you can select a subject. So if you wanted to select your model or whatever, or if there was some sky in your photo, you could select the sky as well. Point being, there is so many options here and so many different ways you can edit this. That is just what I would personally do on this photo is just kind of create a little brush to create something like that. But you can really go crazy with the mask and you can, you can see I have two masks now. I can keep adding masks. I can have as many masks as I want to do some editing all, all over the place in the image using local adjustments, which is really gonna be the way that you're gonna take your photos to the next level. I don't wanna rant any longer about masking. I'm gonna go ahead and check that box. I'm gonna hold on the screen. I like to hold to see the before and the after. I do that a lot just to make sure everything on my edit is looking good. Now my last step here, I like to go into edit. I like to go to effects. I like to apply a little vignette. So I'm just going to subtract on the vignette. About right there looks good. I wanna increase the feather. I like my vignettes to be super feathered. I go all the way up. Then I can lower the midpoint. I like to lower it a little bit to kind of give the photo a little bit harder vignette look. And I'll slide this box just to protect the highlights as well. So now you can see before, after. If you wanted to go back in, this would be the point where you say, okay, I wanna add a little bit of saturation. I wanna add whatever you wanna add. This is the point at which you could do it. But I'm pretty happy with this edit. You can see this was probably like 15 or 12-ish minutes. Um, and I created this really nice looking photo. You can see before and after. So the photo is looking really, really good. I'm really happy with it. But that is how I go about editing my photos on Lightroom Mobile. Hey, thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video. Really, really hope it was helpful for you. Hope there was a lot of good information that you guys will be able to pull in order to edit your photos 
on Lightroom Mobile. Now, if you guys didn't know, I did want to mention that I do have a landscape photography podcast. If you're serious about becoming a better photographer, you guys got to check out my podcast. It's called the Learn Landscape Photography Podcast. I'll throw a link down below where you guys can check that out, but do download some episodes. I've talked to some of the best photographers here in the industry that have shared just so much great advice with me in order to share with you guys. So you guys will ultimately, hopefully, leave the episodes feeling like you've learned something, like you became a better photographer than before. Next time you go on a landscape photography trip, download it, listen to it on your way out there. Hopefully it'll help you guys to take better photos. And of course, if you are serious about becoming a better photographer, like I mentioned, also make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel here. Really, really, really appreciate your likes and subscribes. It's really important to me to continue to keep growing this channel to help you guys become better photographers. So your likes and subscribes and your comments really mean so much to me to help me to continue to release these free weekly videos. Thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video. We'll see you guys next time. This is Austin James Jackson. Adios.